There are times when you're using ProPresenter 6 and you want the people who are part of the presentation, whether it's your worship team or your speaker, uh, to know where they are in the flow of things. So you need a clock. Well, in the old days, we would look at something on the wall or we'd check our watch, but there's a simpler way to do that in ProPresenter. Let me show you how to do that. In this exercise, we're going to look basically, basically at the clock or countdown timer functions. To do that, click on View at the very top. And then from the drop-down menu, choose Clocks slash Timers. It will pop up with several default clocks, and you can add as many others as you want by using the plus key in the lower right corner. Now, you can format the clock. You can choose no date, or you can click the drop down and it will give you the system date of your computer. And then you can choose 24 hours or uh, the regular 12 hours. And this will show the time according to your system clock. Let's look at the, the three major options we have. Um, we could label these clocks anything we want to. We, we could call this uh, paper bag if we wanted, but these are probably very good ways to designate your clocks. But let's look at what they do. First one, I'm going to click on the options. The first one we'll call a countdown timer. And as you might expect, it counts down for a length of in hours, minutes, and seconds. I'm going to strip out the hours in this one and the minutes so it won't take us very long and we'll just count down for let's count down for 10 seconds the square button box over here lets you overrun it means that though you're counting down the counter will keep showing what's going on and, and it will turn into a negative after that so it will show you the overrun if you don't have this checked, it will stop at the end of whatever time you have here. This circle with the arrow will reset your clock. This will show what the time has been, the elapsed time, and this will start it. So if I run this on this screen, I, it says I am counting down from 10 seconds down to nothing. And now I have it. There we go. It's finished. To do the same thing with the overrun, let's see what happens. I'll say we can overrun this time. We will click on it, and this part of the window will show me what happens uh, when I get down to zero. Okay, now it goes into negative land. Okay, we'll stop that. Now, if I want to see the clock, what can I do? Well, the most common use of a clock is on the on the, the back wall or the back uh, flat panel TV, whatever the people on the stage are seeing. So I'm going to turn this, toggle this to stage display. And I've created a, uh, a stage display that, that shows the, uh, the verse, the current time, and then the countdown time. Okay, so watch what happens. Now we are on a duration of 10 seconds. I will clear it. It clears it on the stage display. And I will start it. And now you can see that if you are using this particular countdown one timer on your stage display, uh, what you will see. All right, so that's the first option is count, uh, basically count down timer. Let's try the second option. Let's change this one. I could rename this, but I'm not going to. Let's call this the countdown. This is countdown to time, okay? I need to count down to a time. I look and my system clock says it's 8, 11, um, hours, minutes, seconds. Um, let's go to 8. Now this is time of day, okay? Let's go 8, 14 and 10 seconds just for fun. I will clear this. Now watch what happens over in my preview screen um, when I click start. Okay. And according to this, I've got a minute and 55, 54 seconds to 8.14 and 10. 
I probably should not have put the 10 on there. It's hard to do the math in your head. <laughs> but you can stop it at any time. Uh, and you can reset it. But it shows you what you would see on your stage display. So that is that is the second option. That is count down to time. This is probably one of the most commonly used things um, in your presentation because you're looking at how much time do we have left. And once again, if you click the overrun, what will happen will be it will continue counting, but it will put a negative sign in front of your clock. Let's look at the third option. Third is elapsed time. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete everything in the start field. And we'll say we'll let the lapse time go up to 15 seconds. And I will reset it. And now it's still, it's this is still obeying whatever my countdown one clock is set to. And I've set it to elapsed time. I'll click on start. And it's giving me the amount of time since I clicked on the button. And I probably should have gone 10. <laughs> and it stops. If I do overrun, it would keep counting. So those are the three ways that you can set up clocks. A count down timer, a count to a time timer, and then the lapse time timer. Now, we'd like to show you where you can use these. You can use it on the stage display screen, but you can also use it on your audience display screen, the regular slide. That will be another informational tutorial that we'll, that we'll do for you in a moment. So thank you for learning a little bit about how to set clocks and what the difference is. Play with this and see what you can find and how it will be useful for you in your particular context. Thank you so much. We'd like to thank you for the opportunity to help you learn more about ProPresenter 6 and in particular about clocks and timers in your presentations. If you find this presentation useful to you, we'd like to ask you to like us and subscribe here at the Sharper Turtle. Thank you.